So NVIDIA is down nearly 14% in the last five days. And for those of you who watched my previous videos about where I think NVIDIA is going to be, it's roughly in the sweet spot for us to start selling puts on NVIDIA and start making income as the stock falls. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to go through very quickly the price prediction in terms of where I think NVIDIA, NVIDIA is going to go. And then what we're going to do, we're going to look at NVIDIA's options chain to work out what are the best strike prices and what strike prices I'm going to at the moment to start picking up some income while we hit the sweet spot. So again, if you like the sound of that, all I ask for is that you smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Now, my philosophy has always been when it comes to growth stocks is to buy growth stocks that are below its intrinsic value. And the intrinsic value is essentially, if you take everything of what the company owns, add that all up together, it'll give you the total value of the company. And what we want to do is start buying stock below that valuation. Now, there are many different criteria and valuation or intrinsic value calculations that we can use. But the one we're going to use in this video is my OGT intrinsic value indicator, which is based off EPS or earnings per share. So again, I've got a video on this in terms of what my price predictions were. That was before Nvidia's earnings. So these have been adjusted slightly. Again, not too dissimilar to what I had previously. So again, check out that video. I'll leave that in the pinned comment down below. So again, this indicator is absolutely free. Just go to indicators, type in OGT intrinsic value indicator, and uh, it will come up. And effectively what we need to do, we need to plug in some assumptions inside here. So we need to plug in the EPS annual growth rate for the next five years. So annually, what is the earnings per share growth going to be for NVIDIA? And if you watch my previous videos, again, these are some quite high numbers mainly down to the growth of NVIDIA is absolutely crazy for reasons I'm not going to go to in this video. And the way we kind of get that, I like to start with the high, high assumption, which again is always going to be analyst estimates. So again, what we do, we head over to Yahoo Finance, type in NVIDIA at the top and head over to the analysis section. And then we want to do a scroll right down to the bottom and we want to go to growth estimates over the next five years per annum. And you can see here is 47.28, which is why I've plugged in 47. And I've gone down in increments of five to 35 and 30. We'll do the middle in a second. And again, I'm going through this quite quickly because I've got a number of videos that go into this, but I still get a lot of questions in terms of how do I come up with these inputs? <clears throat> the PE ratio, the price to earnings ratio. So this is looking at you know, a multiplier or growth effect of how valued the company is. And again, it will vary industry to industry, stock to stock. And again, what I like to do is go over to macro trends, uh, type in the ticker in question, go to price ratios and go to PE ratio. And what this does, it gives you the PE ratio all the way back, back until time until we, until they've had a positive EPS number. And you can see here it skyrocketed 117 is currently at 102. And, you know, you can see here that we've had 46 and lols here between 10 to 22, etc. Now this one's a very hard one to kind of predict and I've gone super, super conservative on, on this. So you can see here, we go back to the criteria I've put in, I've put a high of 30. We look at where in the video last was at 30. Again, it was. Oh, what day, what day is this? Uh, so I can have a look at the date here yeah, again. This was the 30th of April, 2023, right? So over a year ago, it was at these levels. Again, it was about, it was around 24, 25. So if you think about where we have, that's the high assumption and I've gone for 25 and 20. So we just take the medium assumption. Last time we went down to 25 or somewhere in between that again was in between like June, uh, June to April last year. So again, it's status far rocketed to there. I can't imagine it jumping down to these levels with the growth that AI has done over the past 12 to 18 months. It may go down, but I don't think it'll get down to those levels um, anytime soon. So I'm very comfortable with that. And then the last piece that we put together is the 
return. So again, I've gone for a 10% return. And you'll see why I've gone for a 10%. Again, I get the question a lot, S&P 500, 8 to 10% a year. Why don't you just put your money in there? Or why don't you ask for a higher return? Because of the risk of investing in one stock as opposed to 500 different stocks. Totally get it, totally understand it. But what we're going to go through in the second part of this video is why I put it at 10% because I'll be making money along the way. And we'll look at some of the returns that you can make doing this um, piece of work. So if we now click on OK, what that does is, if I zoom out slightly, it spits out your five-year pricing for NVIDIA based on your high, medium, and low assumption. And the numbers are kind of arbitrary, but the point I want to make is where I like to get to is I like when the stock is within the sweet spot. And the sweet spot is in between the middle assumption and the low assumption. So if you look at my buy price today, my middle assumption is 121.06. And therefore, if I believe these assumptions, I should be buying NVIDIA because we're currently sitting at 102.83. And my low assumption, which I think is a really big low ball, is at 83. So again, we are around 20%. We're basically right bang in the middle, right? Nearly 20% below the low assumption and 20% above the medium assumption. So we're right inside the sweet spot at 102.83. Let's just say I'm happy to, you know, get Nvidia stock at $90, let's say, right? Let's just use that assumption that that is the situation where I want to be. And generally, when I open positions, you know, I like to open positions in the first block of 100 shares and then dollar cost averaging into a position. So in this particular example, for me to own 100 shares of NVIDIA at 90, let's say, would be $9,000. So you do need capital for this. But again, you can use this without that. You don't need to do this next bit. What you can do is just start buying NVIDIA shares by, you know, a dollar's worth, $10, hundred dollars, or buy one share at $102 worth, whatever it may be, and start building out your position over time. So this is what this tool allows you to do. If you get, if you believe in these assumptions and these growth rates. So what we're going to do now is we're now going to start looking into the NVIDIA's option chain. So again, what I said before is I like to sell options. So selling options is the having the right but not the obligation to own shares at x price so what we do we pick a strike price so what we're saying here if we go down here to the 90 dollars strike price where's the 90 dollars and again i've gone for a september 27th expiration so that's 20 days away recording this on september the 7th and if we go to the 90 dollars strike price is someone would pay me one dollar fifty one per share and again options are always done in blocks of a hundred so if we did a hundred shares that'd be a hundred and fifty one dollars to have the right to sell me their hundred of their shares at ninety dollars now the question is is why would someone want to pay me a hundred and fifty one dollars to secure a 90 strike so as i said before they just dropped you know sixteen dollars in the last in the last five days Again, imagine if it drops another $16 in the, in the next five days or drops $20, $30 in the next five days. So what people like to do is similar to kind of the analogy I like to say is insurance. People are willing to buy insurance to, to secure a price. So let's say I want to secure the hundred dollars. Let's say I own a hundred shares of Nvidia at, well, well, let's just say I bought them at um, $70, let's say, you know. It went up to 120 and making good, a good amount of money today. And now it's dropped to 102. And I'm like, hmm, well, what if I, what if it goes below, you know, $70? But let, and let's just say I'm willing over the next month, you know, if it does drop a bit more, I'm a bit wary about the labor market, all these things that are going on in the macro world that I would, you know, say that I'm willing to sell my shares at a hundred dollars for x amount and we'll look what x amount is in a second but but i don't have to if i don't want to right so even if it drops to 80 but you're thinking oh this is probably the bomb it's probably going to go back up i don't have to sell it so if i go back to the options chain so the hundred dollar you can see here is 432 dollars so in this case i'll be buying a put and me as the seller willing to buy 100 shares at 100 dollars would be 
would be selling that put at the open market with the current price of Friday's close was $432 or $4.32 per share. So I can pay that similar to how you pay your car insurance. Again, if you don't get into an accident or you don't need anything done with your car, you pay that premium and that's it. And then you lose that money and then you do it again next year. And again, you could do this every single month. If I own shares at, at the $70 mark and I don't, and I want to make sure I at least sell it above a hundred at a minimum, I would then keep buying this, uh, buying this put to be able to do that. So again, in my example here, I want to get the 90, I'm going to get the $90. So someone is willing to buy a call. $151 uh, that I put out there in the market. So what will happen is, is let's say this option gets filled is I would get $151 into my bank account or into my brokerage account there. So if we have a look at the return on that, so if we do 151 divided by, you know, the worst case scenario, I lose $9,000 if, um, uh, what's it called? Nvidia drops, uh, dro uh, drops to zero, right? So that is zero point zero one 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 six percent, right? So if I zero point zero one six times by hundred, <clears throat> sorry, it's one point six percent return, right? So now that's one point six percent return, and that's how I did that every single month, right? One point six times by twelve, that's a nineteen point two percent return on my nine thousand dollars. Now, if we go back to what we talked about before on why I say 10% is I'm making 19%. I'm not saying that will always happen. Sometimes it'll be less, sometimes it'll be more, sometimes it'll be 5%. Sometimes I get assigned the shares, whatever it may be. But what I'm saying is the reason why I do a 10% return is because I know I can eke out a 5 to 10% return additional <clears throat> by selling puts before the actual bright even before the actual buy price comes in so that is why i do this at a low number where, where if you're not selling options and you're just buying shares a hundred dollars a week or whatever it may be you might want to drop this to 12.5 percent let's say and what you'll see is what ha what's happening here you can see behind the scenes is that your buy price starts lowering. So now it's at 110 and 75 because you need more of a return every year. So therefore you have to buy it at a lower price to maintain that return that you want to see. So this is how the indicator works, but I wanted to give you some insights in terms of selling put options when it starts hitting the sweet spot. It's the bit I'm telling you right now is this is what I like to see between the low and the middle assumption, even with 12 and a half percent return, we're still inside the sweet spot at 102. And that's where I think 90 is the kind of right place to be. So again, I've been actively selling put options, again, 95, 90, 80, and 85, uh, and you can, uh, around a month out, a month and a half out. And you can see there, we're getting somewhere between, where's that, 95, 250, and 50, and, and $50. So, you know, I've got three, four contracts or three, 400 shares scattered across that range. And if I get tagged or assigned, or get close, uh, you know, in the money as it's called, then there's things I can do. I can roll the option further out in time to bring more money in. I can get assigned these shares and start doing covered calls, which again, is not in the scope of this video, but there's a number of things that we can do here to be able to drive and make additional income. But it all starts with understanding is what is the buy price need to be. And my personal view is I think we're starting to hit that sweet spot. So again, it could eventually take, if we believe the high assumption, we should be buying video of this, this, uh, uh, this whole time. And all I can see is really going this way. So if I can make some money along the way, get a hundred shares worth, and then ride this thing up, if it does even get to 177, <clears throat> you know, that's, you know, nearly double, double my money inside five years. So, you know, this is. This is what investing is all about, trying to find the right price and not believing the hype and being patient. Like a lot of people are, a lot of people are buying in this area here yeah, just because of the hype. There's probably more luck than anything else, but a lot of people were potentially probably buying up here. And again, you know, it is what it is, but you know, just be patient, wait till it gets into your numbers, believe in your numbers, do some research and decide when it's right to pull the trigger for you. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one.